In this short tutorial, I'm going to take you through the process of push process and data from the mobile mapper version 6. And we have to do the particular version of the mobile mapper office software, which is version 4. The first thing I'm going to do, you can see I've already got some data in here, but I'm going to create a new job. I just click the mobile mapper office button here, it's a new job. I'm going to call this. After the data that I'm working with. Select the location, directory for which to save your file, and it recreates the border for us there. And now we've got a blank mobile mapper office project, and we're going to import our data. Now it's very simple, much simpler than the previous versions of mobile mapper office, where you had to use a transfer facility to convert data. If we can just pull data off the GPS, copy it onto your hard drive, and then immediately um, bring it into Mobile Mapper Office 4. Now you see that I've now got a new folder here, which is all being created. I'm just going to copy across my GPS data that we collected um, out in the field. And you can see that we've got shapefile, which are these several different files, I would just say name here. And we've got CRW and GRW files. This is the raw data, the actual map of the sky with all of the satellites in it that was collected at the same time as we were going around checking points and lines and polygons on the shore. What I'm going to do is copy these two files into the GNSS raw data folder just to make it a little bit neater. And now what we're going to do is start importing this information into the mobile map of Office 4. What I'm going to do is simply click Add Layer Collect existing, it automatically takes it into the folder that we were working in before, and to click the shape file. Click OK. It comes up with some coordinate system questions. For the most time, you would never need to touch these. Working with the defaults, you don't need to change them at all. So we just click OK. And you can see that we've now got clusters of points. If we click on each individual point, you can see that we've got some readings coming through. OK. Yeah, our data in here. Now you see, if you're an eagle-eyed person, you see that this button up here has become alive now. Add rover raw data. That's a GRW and CRW files that we saw when we were copying our data across. I'm going to add in some rover raw data now. Put it in this folder if you recall. I'm just going to select GRW file. Click open. It converts it. And now you can see at the bottom, we've now got this time bar which is populated with some level 1 GPS data start time and end time of the observation period. What we need now is to add in reference data. And this is reference data is what we use to post process the points that we've got here to improve the accuracy of our points and also to tell us how accurate or inaccurate our points actually were. Now we get that from the Ordnance Survey Rhinox station data from gps.ordnancesurvey.co.uk forward slash active dot ASP. And we pick up some data which goes and we can use to post process. So what we need is we want to search the location in National Grid reference. Um, simply from our own website, collect the National Grid reference for Conjulus. Paste that in. Grid reference. Station search five stations. Now we need to change the number, the start time and end time of our observation. And remember, start time was 5 p.m. and 10 to the 6th. They only keep GPS data for 30 days, so make sure you come in and get your information quickly before it disappears and then it ends at about 8 o'clock. I'm just going to select an hour either side of that particular station. I'm just going to call it and do this quick search and it comes up with the nearest station which is an ask. And I'm just going to download that single station 12 kilometers away.
seven eight zero five. And here we go with our reference data that we're going to put in. And now I'm going to add a new folder into here. Copy these two files into this particular folder. And there they are now. What I'm going to do now is add that in by selecting add reference raw data from file. different with file extension. Click OK and you see now that the time bar has filled in around this. What we need to do now is just simply click launch post processing. It doesn't take very long. And here is the reference station which is 12 kilometers away from our actual site. Each one of these individual green lines tells us some important information about our point. What we're most interested in really is HRMS, or horizontal error, which is 22 centimeters for that one, 23 centimeters for this. That's what post processing actually does. Okay, so we've got 19 centimeters of error in these particular points. 18. So it depends purely on the amount of time that we spent on each individual point. But good accurate data there. I'm very happy. What I'm going to do now is export the raw data the new post process points that we have by going to export. And it asks us what kind of mechanism you want to export it in. Also, it automatically spits out post-process points, final points, from the actual data set. And you can work with the post-process points and just put them straight into the new the GIS. And you can just see here, just by clicking between the original point and the post-process point, now that is slightly different. It's showing just the max improvement that you can get from post processing your information. Makes it well worth it. And it only takes a few seconds.